Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Patreon exclusive video for September 2019 and in this month I talk about the posterior synovial fold which can be found on shoulder MRI. Now there are two studies that basically cover this topic. One is a little bit older already from 2009 which described this synovial fold of the posterior shoulder joint capsule and there is a recent one from February this year 2019 where they did go into a little bit more detail about morphology and different types of these synovial folds. What is a posterior synovial fold of the glenohumeral joint capsule? First of all, we have to understand that in MR arthrography and also on normal MRI, the posterior joint capsule can look like this. A posterior synovial fold of the glenohumeral joint capsule is this structure here. You can see that the joint capsule here has a little fault, a tiny little one here, going from supraposterior all the way down to posterior inferior. This is not a part of the labrum and here lies the importance of the structures. You should not mistake this structure as a labral tear of the posterior labrum. The posterior synovial fault is uncommon and it's only visible in 2-6% of all MRIs and it is somewhat logical that it's more prevalent or better seen on MR arthrography compared to standard MRI without intraarticular contrast agent. The reason is because of the better distension of the joint capsule, you are more likely to see this synovial fold if present. Before we move on with some examples here, just a quick overview over these studies, you will find links to these publications in the description down below or on the Patreon page where you can download the article completely. And you can see here in this in this diagram, you can see this synovial fold here of the posterior joint capsule here from supraposteriorly all the way down here in this publication. And they give us here some examples and you can nicely see this posterior synovial fold here and this is the normal joint capsule. Now I like this study better by Ogul et al because it has really nice diagrams. And you can see how they perform the measurements, uh, but that's not really important, it's just for study purposes. But you can see here in this diagram that it can be either uh, triangular, it can be flat, it can be linear. And there is different shapes. There can be just like this tiny protuberance here, a little bit pro more prominent, and you can have two little folds and one thick one here. So these are like the four types that they describe in that study. You can read it for yourself. It is also to mention that the posterior joint capsule can have different insertions here on the glenoid. And you can see here straight to the labrum, then a little bit more medially here and even far medially at the neck of the glenoid. I suggest you go and read the descriptions of these uh, figures and have a look at the abstract. The rest is not very important. Obviously, sometimes the distance can be quite different. So I already showed you this patient here with this tiny synovial fold of the posterior glenohumeral joint capsule here. In addition, this patient has a posterior, posterior labral tear, which is readily visible here on this image. Now let me show you another patient. Now this might look similar to the last case, but the difference is this little black triangle here is a posterior synovial fold and it's not a posterior labral tear. So that's very important to make this distinction, okay? Because this is the synovial fold and the labrum is this structure here. This is just for comparison a normal posterior joint capsule without fold. So basically that's it and this is really the key message here that this posterior synovial fold here is a normal variant and you should not mistake this as a posterior labral tear. I hope this was helpful to you and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or questions. And thanks again for all your support, you're really amazing and I'm really proud to have you. And thanks for supporting me. See you next time.